what are the largest roadblocks to blockchain adoption in general? Um, well, specifically for the agri market, you know, getting the uh, the most important people who are part of the value chain onto a distributed ledger is the biggest challenge. Right? How do you access, you know, farmers in Ghana, in other parts of Africa, or around the world as well? How do you get them to start contributing data that can then be recorded on the blockchain? Whether it's data related to the fertilizers they're using, data related to the sustainability practices they're using. Uh, data related to them being compliant with what the end producer wants from them. Um, that's that's the challenge. I think there are you know other issues that you know once you solve that challenge, I think it just opens up a whole market, a whole uh, opportunity for the farmers to benefit directly by having a relationship with the end uh, buyers of their product. So you can imagine you know like a company like Nestle who's buying cocoa products from Ghana they can enter into a, a direct relationship with the farmers where they are making sure that the farmer is producing in a sustainable manner, but they can also enter into financial contracts with the farmer to procure the goods from the farmer at a set price in the marketplace. So essentially you're sort of entering into these forward type marketplaces where you're reducing the risk for the farmer as well as reducing the risk for end, end buyers like Nestle or you know, Kroger or any other large uh, food producer. Uh, but as I said earlier, the, the challenge is getting the farmers, uh, you know, who are the big, really big new the value chain onto the distributed ledger. And that this, this does not mean they need to be educated on blockchain, but it means you know they need to be comfortable using an iPhone app or you know whatever Android app uh, to record certain processes and interact with 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 the system that way. What aspects of agriculture are most likely to be changed by a blockchain network? Yeah, so there are several aspects. Um, I think they generally fall into two categories. One is you know, food safety um, and provenance of food, you know, knowing where your food came from, whether it's coffee, beans, or whether it is wheat, you know, knowing that the food has come from a particular location and also knowing that the production of the food has been done in a compliant way with sustainability uh, best practices in mind is, is important. So that's one aspect of it. And the second is around, you know, trade supply finance, right? So you have, you know, let's say farmers in Ghana producing this food, you know, how do you make sure that they're getting paid the fair amount, you know, for what they're producing and there aren't too many intermediaries taking a piece of that value that they're producing. And how could the transparency of the open ledger directly impact farmers' quality of life? Uh, sure. So, you know, trust is a very big issue, right, in our world today. You know, how do we know if this, these coffee beans have, you know, that have been grown in Kenya or Ghana, for example, have gone through, have been, have been produced in a way where, you know, they're, they're meeting all the regulatory requirements or even sort of the general best practices around uh, food safety and sustainability. So by recording it on a distributed ledger or a blockchain, um, you're providing trust, uh, you're, you're doing it in a way where consumers of that data know that the data hasn't been tampered with. So for example, you know, if I'm here in Switzerland, you know, buying a product in a grocery store like Coop or Migros, and I look at the packaging and it says, you know, grown sustainably, you know, they, they could have a QR code where I can go and scan the code and I can then see in a very transparent fashion the, the path that the food has taken to get to me, as well as what best practices the farmer has used uh, in the production of that food.